This is Movies, a podcast about the act of cinema. And with me today, you've seen him on Comedy Central's Premium Blend. You've got Hans. Hans, you look very <laughs> warm. You look very sweaty. How are you doing? Very, very shiny. I'm, I'm boiling over here. I'm sweating my weight in water, I guess. Sweat. Uh, you got very oily looking Salty cheeks. water. Hey, we got a, we got yeah. our, our all time uh, uh, most frequented guest on this program. We've got Jake Hanrahan <laughs> back. I think this is part like seven or eight or nine. Biggest loser, biggest movies loser. Yes, always coming on them. <laughs> and we're talking about quite a few movies today, and uh, I'm very excited to talk about all these these films uh, that are charged with homoeroticism, seemingly across the board, every single mm. one of them, without exception. Um, yeah, actually. So it seems like since the, the beginning of, uh, of movie history, uh, people get this wacky notion that you can just suppress films to, to hide unpleasantries in society or in nature um, since, since its invention in the, the well, early 20th century. Um, what, are some, uh, what are some movies that come to mind for you, Hans? That uh, you know, maybe your your parents hid from you or, or something when you were a kid. My parents were never very aware of media growing up, really. Uh, so whatever I was discovering, if they would catch me or if they were watching it with me, it would also be the first time because the whole you know third world country thing <laughs> didn't really have access to as many things as you guys. And my parents didn't really grow up with. Uh, you know, TV shows or anything like that, that you would know at least everything was either Mexican production or, you know, something that existed for a couple of years and that's it. Or so terrible. Uh, a TV show that, well, a TV show that they might have gotten, like an American show that they, they dubbed. But, you know, my parents grew up in the 60s, 70s, so media was not really a thing. They don't really know much about. I don't think my parents have even seen, like, Exorcist or, you know, those movies that most people have seen. Uh, just because it wasn't a thing uh, when they were growing up. So everything I've discovered has been on my own, pretty much. <clears throat> and Jake, you're in the UK, obviously. Um, mm. And you've got like, uh, I mean, there's a different kind of censorship board over there as far as like art and media goes. Uh, how familiar are you with that like general thing? Um, not very, but I do remember like every so often there would be like a band film or a band documentary and it would be like a kind of splash and tabloid, you know, like red top media. Um, and then it would just make everybody want to watch it, you know, um, and that's about it. But I don't remember that. I mean, growing up, I, my dad kind of just let me watch whatever I wanted, which is pretty fucked up, but you know, he would let me watch like 18s when I was like fucking six um and i remember just watching a, like even on the tv you know we had quite a lot of like there was this crazy series called nil by mouth where this this group of friends like kill a guy and he gets rigor mortis and they like smash his legs into bits to like bury him in the fucking like you know in like the um uh foundations of their house and that was just on at like 10 p.m on bbc you know so i always remember just being like wow this is pretty crazy you know yeah, that's, that's the thing about television in the UK that's very different from uh, America, or at least like in the past before everything went to streaming is, uh, to my knowledge, and correct me if I'm wrong, like after 9 or 10 p.m. you can say fuck, you can, you can show anything you want on the television set. And uh, here, yeah. you know, they just waste that, that time with like paid programming and, and James Corden. What's it? What's it called? Watershed? Is it? Yeah, like the the watershed. Yeah. So I remember when in the nineties and early two thousands, even like after the watershed, everything got like pretty fucking good, a bit gnarly, like a bit gritty. Now, like our media is just so. I don't know. Like, there's a whole. Everyone's become really coy. Everybody's like, you know, that that kind of wild era of the nineties is very very much gone in in British television. So now there's there's not much difference but before like growing up there was a big difference like after 9 p.m it started getting mad after 10 p.m like everything was on you know hmm. so uh yeah i mean i it goes without saying like this is an obviously relevant topic to today since everything's getting uh clipped from something perpetually like the big one mm. is uh what lola bunny's breasts is the big hot topic of the day 
because they think <laughs> they think that yeah. adults are going to see this movie and and uh, you know have a ravenous hard on in the theater, start jacking off in front of all the kids. I don't know what the hell they're on about. It's just a it, it's so weird though. It's like it, right, it's just a cartoon, and it's like like Lola Bunny. You know, if you want to fuck cartoons, then she was a hot cartoon. <laughs> but like they changed it. But it's, it's like still a what, rabbit. It's I know, still but it's like what, like like hot, Sick hot, of. curvy women can't be that's powerful. A, like they've had to change her. Oh no, she can't be hot. What, what like, is it? Hold on, but what is the argument for getting hard at a cartoon? Like you got tricked because it seems similar enough to a woman. I've never been I, around. That's like, what no, no, man. I've never understood that, man. Like I remember that's seeing not... hentai once, like as a real young kid. Like <laughs> one guy I know, like he was like, I got this and showed me, and I was like. What? Like I could just draw year old guy you know from the neighborhood. <laughs> no, like, hey, come watch this. <laughs> no, no, he was like a little bit older than me, but yeah, I was just like, this is useless. He loved it, though, but yeah. Well, that's 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 great. Um, yeah. So the, that's uh, the one thing that I thought was really really funny about this whole Lola Bunny thing that a lot of people are just coming out with. Yeah, she was hot. She was like the first cartoon that I was ever attracted to, and, and people <laughs> proud of that, and just like. It's still a rabbit. It's, it's yeah. like a humanized rabbit still that you wanted to fuck when you were a teenager. Actually, actually, I tell you what. When I was about four, about four years old, I watched Basil the Mouse Detective. And there's a scene where there's like a woman, she's like dancing and she has a garter. Like, you know, like a fucking garter on her thigh. And as a sure. four-year-old, I was like, I don't know why, but I fucking love that scene. And like, my, I, I didn't have it. This kid, Billy, I'd always be saying to Billy, like, put Basil the Mouse Detective on. He's like, why do you want to watch that again? I was like, I did a good film. <laughs> it's wow. so weird. Yeah, but I was very young. I think I was just like, what? Like, you know, like, not understanding this female mouse was not real, you know? Wow, sexual awakening is, is what? Basil the Mouse Detective. That's Yeah, that's, that's a four-year-old <laughs> mouse pervert, man. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, Babar the elephant. Um, <laughs> <laughs> okay, so um, to get into some of the films we're talking about tonight, like the the earliest um, of this would probably be The Birth of a Nation, <laughs> the D.W. Griffith uh, film, which I think is very hard to track down in a physical copy nowadays, even though it is in the public domain. Um, it's that like KKK one, right? It, yes. So the idea of this movie was... Um, they cover the the loss of the Civil War and then uh, the repercussions of that and just society falling apart because, uh, you know, black people were given rights or whatever. Mm. And mm. this th this has been attributed to, like, creating the resurgence of the KKK in the early 20th century. It seems like a convenient narrative to me. It seems like, you know, people were pr probably full of resentment and hostility anyway, so it probably would have turned into something else. Right. Um, but... I was under the impression this this movie was just dandy with society during that time because uh, the president at the time, Woodrow Wilson, aired it at the White House. It was like the first film that was theatrically screened at the White House. But this is not the case. Um, my hometown of Boston actually tried oh, to get this boy. movie banned. Yeah, Boston always gets credited for being a racist place. It's not that racist. It's <laughs> yeah. just people are sloppy with it their is. language. That's all. Yeah, no. yeah. Uh, <laughs> not... It's the truth. <laughs> Uh, and uh, they they tried to get this movie outlawed or whatever, and um, I can't remember because we were supposed to do the show like a, a year ago or something, and I this, this memory's <laughs> gone. But uh, they obviously didn't, you know, get their their outcome that they were after. What about that remake that was supposed to come out? I I, I don't know if it did. Like five years ago. That's or not a remake. Before the director. That's I know what you're talking oh. about. Uh, so there was um. The and director got canceled or something he got me too before because they came out. He was part of a gang yeah. rape, and then the girl killed herself, and then they blamed him for that. Or no, he wasn't even in the gang rape. He was just there. He was around, you know. And, uh, yeah, they went after him. This movie got sold for, like, the most money ever at Cannes or, or Sundance, one of these festivals. And then all the Oscar hopes dissipated in that moment when that story came out. It was not Wait, a remake. What the... The director was involved in a real life gang rape. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So let me let me figure out. The, I mean, uh, there's canceling and there's like, yeah, okay, fuck <laughs> that guy. Like, Jesus Christ, that's not one of them ones we like. Come on, it's like, whoa, fuck him, man. Jesus mm. Christ. The Birth How of the a Nation fuck? was 2015, I want to say, and uh, it was about the Nat Turner Rebellion. Yeah, 2016. 
Mm. And this movie got good reviews at first and then bad reviews after the story came out. And then the movie just uh -huh. disappeared. And that's uh, that's about the, the gist of that. Um, have either of you guys seen, you probably, you, neither one of you have seen Birth of a Nation. I don't know why I'm asking this. No. Uh, no. I, I've seen no. maybe like 10 minutes of it and I just got like really, really bored. Like the, the big film nerd take is like D.W. Griffith. Yes, he made this movie. He's a good director, but not because of this movie, but because of uh, uh, Intolerance. Intolerance was his big epic follow-up because to D.W. Griffith, he's making this movie and he's like, not understanding the critical feedback to it that you know is calling him racist he's like i'm not a racist what are you talking about yeah i'm he not was a racist Democrat, at all right? yeah probably I, I i don't know i'm um, sure so, well the guy that funded it was like a big democrat or some yeah shit. yeah well at the, Wait, at they the were time, calling him racist in the 20s in the tw yes in the whatever. 20s people are like this is a racist when film dw what are you thinking and he's like i don't understand <laughs> no. your what, what is what are you saying i'm racist for look i'll prove i'm not racist i'll do intolerance and intolerance is about all the intolerance throughout history in like four different chapters uh you know like the persecution of uh jesus and the the egyptians or i don't know something something going on with that it's all right a comedy it's it's, yeah. it's a hilarious life of brian style comedy yes <laughs> <laughs> uh, so th this is the first big example of it uh you can buy a blu-ray of it uh on ebay for like 40 dollars 50 dollars uh the next one that i want to go uh down the list on is the great dictator charlie chaplin have you guys seen the great dictator no, no. i was in the speech well it's a it's a good one all right next up uh which, which one uh, which ones did you watch jay <laughs> wait that was what, why was that canceled i don't offensive why was that something. comedy's outlawed it's banned comedy's dead didn't you see no safe spaces prager you adam carolla no <laughs> oh god um mm -hmm. what did we watch uh what's that bad lieutenant yes um, bad lieutenant's the 90s one. Did, what, what about uh before that? yeah it was all right uh, what I watched before that. Uh, well, the, you can buy oh, Birth oh. of a Nation for three dollars on Amazon. <laughs> yeah, if, if you're gonna rent it or something, I bet. <laughs> I'm not talking. Well, about no, it's a Blu-ray, the, the Nat Turner one. For th Blu -ray, oh, that three dollars. Yeah, all right. Well, that's not on the list. The other one's fifteen. Okay. Hang on, we had a list of films. Um, so here's the, here's the list that uh, I came up with, and we'll just talk about whatever like the the earliest example is. You got the Great Dictator, Scorpio Rising. Which you referenced, and yeah, I tried watching that. that. Yeah, I, yeah. I, I put that on maybe like ten minutes ago. That just seemed like, like a it's like a so gay shit. rockabilly BDSM just, music video. Yeah. Uh, Midnight Cowboy, Clockwork Orange, yeah, yeah. Last Tango yeah, in Paris. Um, all right. Well, well, we'll pause. You saw you saw Midnight Cowboy. Yeah, I didn't finish it. Uh, I just thought it was shit. Um, <laughs> I don't know, man. I was just like, it's just it was just boring, man. It's like, right, it's okay. It, it was just, they have the same song for honestly an hour. Like they played after a whole hour of that song coming in every five minutes. I was like, I can't anymore. So that <laughs> bored me. Um, like it was just weird, man. But I watched, yeah, Scorpio Rise and I saw, um, and then Clockwork Orange I've seen. Honestly, like the weird thing about like Scorpio Rise and I read about that and was like, oh, it's this mad band film. And I saw some screenshots and I was like, wow, this looks kind of like really cool, like edgy as fuck, like some weird like homoerotic thing in a time when like everybody wanted to kill gays and there's some weird Nazi shit and then there's biker shit. And then I put it on and I watched it and was like, what was the point? You know, it's like, yeah. what's his name? Kenneth Anger. And like, it's one of them things where because there's some kind of mysticism around him, people just say like, wow, isn't his films good? And it's like, no, that film was shit. Like, okay, yeah. maybe back then it was mildly shocking, but now it's not it's it's not shocking. But it was just shit. Like there are good films that have been banned, but it was just a shit film, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's it's difficult to to get shocked by something like this when things like RuPaul's drag race exist. <laughs> yeah, <know>? literally, yeah. <laughs> like that, that's normal now. Like and what's in Scorpio Rising is probably not even nearly as like graphic. Yeah. No, not that that's graphic, but you know what I mean? Like that much flesh is probably not even on show, which I know back in the day was a big thing. Like, oh, there's a thigh out. You know what I mean? Like everybody's going to die. But yeah, man, it, it's funny when you watch these things, how, I don't know, I guess it's the attitudes have changed or what, which is obvious. It happens always throughout history. But 
Like even Clockwork Orange, I'm like, what remotely would be banned about that? I just don't, I don't even get it. Even in the time it came out, you know, I did a little bit of research on that and I thought, I mean, come on, like there was all sorts of subversive stuff back then, you know, we, which I guess my point is, I think things get banned often, like depending on which time period you're in, but I think they often like someone would just zone in on it and be like, right, that has pissed me off. Like, you know, it was Grand Theft Auto for a while, you know, all the politicians. like, And I feel like a lot of these films, it's just someone has seen it and that is just really like, you know, bothered their inner conservative or whatever. And they've just gone after it. Like a lot of them, I don't see why, you know, I mean, like Bad Lieutenant, why? Because he had his dick out. Oh, no, I guess the, the nun gets right. Yeah, I can, I can see that, actually. But <laughs> I, I fucking forgot about that shit, man. Yeah, that's pretty bad. But, um, but you know what I mean? Like, a lot of it, I think, is like a political thing, you know, rather than the actual reaction from people. Oh, yeah, no, there's nothing sincere well, think- about it at all. You can look at today, and there's plenty of people who say very spicy things who have not been canceled because they haven't, you know, gotten the correct eye on them yet where that type of person yeah. will hone in and, and decide I need to eliminate you from whatever it might be. Uh, and plenty of people have been clipped over very arbitrary, soft reasons um, that have done far less. But go ahead, Hans. I know you're, you're going to forget your point in a second if I don't shut up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, I just think it's funny, uh, like what you're saying, what, whatever it's offensive at the moment, because uh, I feel like with a lot of this, this films on this list, uh, the thing that's offensive or the thing that got them banned kind of makes sense in the context of the movie. So even though, you know, it might be offensive or some people might get offended by it, it's not like they were thinking of including this one thing in the movie so that people get offended, but they do make sense in the movie. Now, when you think of something like a Serbian film where you have baby rape and, and, and shit thrown in at it, that it's obviously just for shock value yeah. so that, you know, how much we can push the envelope. That I can see a censorship making more sense because it's obviously put in there for that, so to mm. cause shock. But something they like... They want to get banned, I think, those kind of films. You exactly, know? Yeah. yeah. So let's say something like Last Tango in Paris. We have, like, that butter scene, right? The butter rape or the butter sex scene or whatever. It makes sense in the context of the movie that something like that would happen. Sure, it was horrible. It shouldn't have happened. The actor should have done that. But if you watch the movie, it makes sense that the, the character would do that. So the fact that it was banned, it's like, okay, you're banning the vision of the artist, even though it makes sense in, in, in the context. I, I, I don't really see how banning it does anything other than, I mean, it's just censorship for the sake of censorship. But if you see something more modern, like a Serbian film, for example, where it, the, the object of it or the, the, the point of it is to offend people and things are put in to get offended or to get banned, then the censorship will make more sense. Uh, I go through that whole list that we have when we have things like natural born killers, which is fine. It's violent or whatever, but I, I don't really see why. Uh, I don't it's... see anything in that that is right. like ban it it's like all of it makes sense like there's fucking serial killers or whatever like obviously they're gonna do a lot of killing you know yeah yeah no i think you're right especially during the 90s too that seems very excessive to me to try and like again i feel like that was probably more a stunt on warner brothers or whoever was putting that movie out at the time to uh you know just hype up the the talk around that because you had oliver stone you had quentin tarantino involved in that so you're the thinking psychopaths like how far can you like, how much are you willing to put your audience through i guess to get the point across that this person is horrible uh and yeah yeah i just that one on the list was one that i was very confused about because i can't remember anything from it that would be offensive to the point of getting anyone or anything banned from it so it, it didn't really make much sense that that I would think, get um... Yeah, I think a lot of it as well comes down to the influence of the people wanting it banned. For example, like, you know, I was just on about Bad Lieutenant. I said, oh, fuck, I, I forgot. But there's there's a, you know, the scene where the nun gets raped. I mean, it's not particularly graphic or convincing or, you know what I mean? It's like obviously not pleasant, but it's, it you know, it's not graphic really. But it's like the Catholic Church has so much power in the world. You know what right. I mean? Yeah. So it's like, okay, I get it. I can understand why that ended up getting to a point where, like, it got banned because, you know, Catholic Church, you know, I mean, they, they stopped thousands and thousands of people using contraceptives. Like, I mean, the amount of power they have still, you know, to this day is insane. Um, and it's like, I can get it. And I think really, 
the conversation around like what should be banned and shouldn't be banned. I mean, I don't have an answer for it, but I don't, I, there's very little I see the point of, you know, unless it's like, you know, I've, I've heard about things where it's like, oh, there was some kind of pedo scene. And when you read into it, it's like whoever made that was probably just a fucking pedophile. Like it's, it's, you know what I mean? It's like, it's too much. It's like, why is it, why do you have to make something so seem so real <laughs> in certain things? You know yeah. what I mean? Not that I'm one for censorship, but there's certain things where it's like, come on, it's just, it's obscene on a different level. Whereas, you know, like gore. I mean, I, I, to me, gore is just gross. It makes me want to turn the film off. I find it much more like interesting when it alludes to something, you know what I mean? Rather right. than actually fucking seeing it. So I, I don't know. It's, it's really interesting. I, I, when, when you were saying about like, we should do this canceled thing, I started reading up on like canceled films and the whole culture around that banned films or whatever. Um, yeah, it, it's so interesting, man. Like, especially when it like, you know, per, per country, you know what I mean? Like Australia yeah. would love banning shit, you know? When, when you mentioned the Catholic Church, that's uh, the only one I can think of that was banned here or anything that has been banned here in Costa Rica has been anything that has any type of uh, priest or Catholic involvement. So, so there's this movie right called... The, the, no, 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 nothing like that because I, I don't even know if that was even here. I wasn't here when that came out. But there's this Mexican movie called uh, The Crime of Father Amaro or something like that. And it's about this young priest that has sex with a young uh, girl from, I think she's of age, but she's like, you know, one of the people from his church and he's not supposed to do that. And he has sex with her and then she goes to get an abortion and she dies. So it's like that crime of like, Oh, you're not supposed to do that. That was banned uh, from coming into the country because it's offensive and, you know, something that, you know, shouldn't come in and ideas that we should not be exposed to. And the other one that I can, that just pops into my head is the, uh, the passion of the Christ. Uh, oh, that yeah. one, Mel Gibson one. Yeah, that one. No, 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 not the Passion. Sorry, no, the Last, Last Temptation. Temptation well, yeah, I was going to mention one. that. Yeah. That uh, that got a lot of trouble from the Catholic League. They tried to shut that, that down was, at every opportunity. Why? Well, that was one of the things that that uh, woke me up to because I was Catholic growing up, and I was instill the fear of if you don't do this, you go to hell, and it's horrible. Yeah. And blah, 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 growing up. Um, when I like, I remember the outrage that everyone had here about that movie and how you know you're depicting Jesus in a way that didn't happen and it's horrible and it's sacrilege and whatever. Years later, I watched it and it's just they just made it's Jesus pretty human. Tame. Yeah, they, like, that, the, that was the problem. It's a, <laughs> yeah, it's the problem. only time yeah. the only time when he's not perfect. So I was like, all right, so they're just protecting you from seeing Jesus is not a perfect being. That doesn't make any sense. Like their censorship didn't make any sense. But I remember distinctly growing up and that movie was just like, no, can't be seen here in the newspaper. Just like opinions from people being like Satan is here and all that shit. And it's oh just a movie where he's horny. You know, <laughs> he gets kind of horny. <laughs> Yeah, it's like uh, I recently read uh, that book, Holy Blood, Holy Grail. Um, I think it's been mostly disproven, but, you know, it's interesting. Um, it's kind of, I mean, it's nonfiction, but I, I read it as a fiction almost. And, you know, there's a lot that the, the Catholic Church really doesn't like about that whole thing. And it's it's not that, oh, it might be real. You know, some of the conspiracy people around it say, oh, the, the church hates it because it's probably real. Um, and if you don't know, it's the theory that, you know, Jesus didn't die on the cross. He went, you know, he had a kid with Mary Magdalene, blah, blah, blah. And it's like what you've said. It, it, it's the, the, the church aren't worried that, oh, it might be real. The church is worried that people might believe it. And then they see Jesus as anything less as a deity, which actually historically he never really was. Like it's kind of yeah. he was just like, you know, the Messiah. Messiah was never actually a religious term. Messiah just meant like kind of revolutionary. You know what I mean? Like, it, it, you know, it didn't really take on a religious term right. or a deity term. And it's like, yeah, it kind of opens up the, the, um, like the motive behind the banning, right? It's never really, oh, this is going to offend people. It's like, oh shit, this is going to fuck shit up for us. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. I don't, I don't know what the strength of the, like the Catholic league is nowadays because I don't know. Catholicism has obviously fallen out of favor. I haven't seen them going after really any move. I mean, there would be plenty to go after if they really, mm -hmm. you know, had an issue. Anything that's on HBO Max right now, they could probably go after. Um, but no, I, I mean, this this was a big fuss back in the 1980s. And it seemed like by the time that the Passion of the Christ came around, like, I, well, they didn't really have a problem. They, I think they love that movie, actually. 
Um, well, yeah, it was like the Jewish, the Anti-Defamation League. Right, like, ADL you know, had a problem with that. It's basically like Mel Gibson's ode to anti-Semitism, right? It's like <laughs> anti-Semitism, the movie, like in HD. Like, it's such a funny, like, it, it's if like Mel Gibson hadn't gotten all that trouble, it wouldn't be as funny. But because, I mean, because he did, it's just like, that was a fucking story. hell, Mel Gibson. Like, you're like, are you that funny? <laughs> <laughs> you well, know what I mean? He hates you the, so much. He makes the whole film the, like the second one's coming out, right? So I yes. just want to see how far he how far he the, pushes. The he has, he's got what a out. decade, maybe a year or he's two from a... now. It, it's mostly done. I've seen. <laughs> I I think there were set photos that came out with Jim Caviezel now aged like twenty five <laughs> years or however long it's been since the last one. Yeah, that'll be great. Yeah, he's he's had like fifteen years of anger towards that same type of people that cancel yeah. him and push him he, out of the industry he, now. <laughs> he just can't drop it, can he? It's like, I remember reading the thing and just laughing so hard when it was like, he was arrested by a Jewish police officer and was like screaming like anti-Semitic shit. <laughs> I like, I thought that must have been so funny for the police officer, just like, you dumb fuck. <laughs> like, you know what I mean? Like, you're a fucking Mel Gibson and you couldn't <laughs> even panic. You know what I mean? Like That movie... I remember my mom called me coming out of that movie. She was bawling, crying. And I was like, what the fuck? Really? Like, they killed yeah, Jesus. Just, well, what did she yeah, expect to happen? That's, yeah. that go- that's how the story up. goes. I know. And it was just like, well, they just beat him up for two hours. Just I mean, it was the Romans that fucking killed him anyway. Like, it wasn't even the Jews. You know what I mean? Like, such a weird thing, man. But yeah, I don't know. Like, I, I think one thing as well, like in Britain, we had... Um, we had a documentary about uh, the death of Princess Diana, who, you know, for a lot of people was kind of the only good royal. You know what I mean? Like nobody, I wouldn't say nobody, but like, the, you know, the, the love of the royal family has simmered down a lot over the decades. A lot of people have realized that they just kind of, you know, they're freeloaders. You know, they take a lot of money from tax. They, You know, it, it's not, it's. It's not whether you like them or not. It's just it, a lot of people have realized like this just isn't fair. They don't do anything. <laughs> yeah, it's like <laughs> yeah. really not fair. Um, and you know, and as a lot of the jingoism kind of lost, you know, lost its footing in the UK, people look to Diana as in like she was the only good one. She was the only kind of do they say human that one because she died young. Do you think that's all? Well, honestly. Like, people loved her, man. Like, you know, like, in my family, like, fucking, you know, my granddad is no fucking fan of the royal family. And even he was, like, she was good. Like, she did that thing where she went to Africa and, you know, the queen wouldn't take off her gloves to shake hands with people in case they had AIDS. And she did. Like, I mean, it's kind of pathetic when it's like, oh, wow, like, you're so brave, thank you. <laughs> but back then, it was like, you know, it, it was a big thing, you know what I mean? Well, I mean, you can't was, catch uh, age from shaking hands anymore. No, but, but I mean, um, look, when I was four, I wouldn't buy hamburgers because I was petrified of mad cow disease. That's just how, yeah. uh, you know, information <laughs> yeah, spread yeah. back then. You didn't know. Yeah. Nobody knew anything. But anyway, like, everyone loved her. Um, she was pretty loved, you know, and then she died young. And then there was this documentary came out um, made by Keith Allen, who, you know, he's like a TV celebrity um he it's lily allen you know the singer it's like her dad and it was it's called uh unlawful killing and it's a documentary basically saying that you know the queen and prince philip had her killed because she'd had uh she'd had a baby with uh, a muslim and you know and to be honest it's not that far-fetched like if you look at the history of the royal family um but anyway that got banned and it just made it massive you know what i mean like honestly if they hadn't got that band, I don't think much. It would have. It wouldn't have been much, man. But it just for a while it became like huge, you know. Like people really liked it. I watched it. It's fine, you know. Like it's not great, but it's it's all right. But uh, I remember even my grandma was like, "Oh, can you get me that film? I what? You know, it's banned. I want to watch it. You know what I mean?" I was like, "Wow, the power of banning a documentary." You know? Well, the thing with Diana was that she was the only human one, right? Everyone right, else right. seems so above everyone and just the way that they conducted themselves towards anyone else, whether we're always above them or like just saying hello from afar. And then you have her who before uh, the prince met her, well, he met her when she was underage, but before he got oh. with her, she was like, yeah, she was doing charitable things. You know, she was working yeah, with sick people yeah. and like sick old people and that's how he met her. So she was always kind of like the the outsider of that family so i guess that's why everyone loved her so much i guess 
Well, th this is how like <laughs> fucking easily fooled the British public is sometimes. Like, you know, people are like, oh, she's just like us. I mean, she is from one of the richest families probably that you'll ever meet, you know? Like, she is the highest tier of elitism possible underneath the royals. But because she's not quite like on that level, it was like, oh, we like her, you know what yeah. I mean? So, but no, to be fair, you know, I fucking, I'm no fan of Royal Family, but, you know, she was pretty cool. But yeah, I just remember like being young and remembering that like that was one of the first things that, you know, when it was banned, I really wanted to see it as well. And to this day, when something gets banned, I kind of want to see it just to know, oh, really? What's it, what's it all about? And I, I've never once watched something that's banned where I've been like, wow like okay yeah like, i'm so glad i watched it now like it's like mm. oh really is that it you know what i mean i think i think well, that's this... certainly the case nowadays everything you see that gets mm -hmm. you know pulled from theaters or distribution or, or, or whatever is usually like a c-grade movie or or tv show for the most part like people are i, I mean look i was i was watching that roseanne reboot because there was nothing else on tv but uh, <laughs> that, that's that's a banned piece of media now because she got kicked off Twitter or or something like um, the hunt that that movie because they were hunting Trump supporters or whatever that yeah. got pulled from from theaters and it's like are are these movies really great movies? No, there's an added mystique to them no. nowadays because of these these factors. But uh, for the most part, you're, what you're going to see is going to usually be unimpressive, at least compared to a lot of these 20th century films that were suppressed by some organization or um, by, you know, the company that did produce them at the time. I think there is actually a lot of value in these films that came out from like the 1970s to the 90s. Well, it's become a marketing tool, right? So yeah. something like Paranormal Activity, that hugely successful franchise wouldn't exist if that first movie wasn't marketed as it was, but that, hold which on, was a, used. There, in, there's a difference between, you know, uh-oh, someone puked in the theater when they saw this movie, and right. we're not showing this movie to anyone. We're going to keep this locked in a vault. That's the company being petrified that they're going to get so harsh uh, a feedback that their investors are going to pull out of the company. Mm. But does that, does that happen anymore, though? Like, what yes. what's... The, How's the Jack built, I guess? Something that's like different, that. But be... that's a foreign movie. Like you're talking about a movie that was uh, produced by a, a company in Denmark, I believe. Like the, right. the, the general ethos in a country like that or even like France or, or Italy is so much different than what I think is happening in the United States and probably the United Kingdom um, when it comes to what movies are greenlit and also just the amount of uh, creative integrity that the director or screenwriter is going to have when it comes to producing that film. Right. <clears throat> I guess I just can't think of the top of my head of any modern movies that had that treatment of, you know, no one's able to see it, mostly because now everything gets leaked online. So even if you don't want someone to see it, someone's going to leak a torrent and it'll get out there. Um, They've got but, better guess, at containing that, though. Like, there's certain things I've tried to find and it's like, fucking hell, like, I actually can't find this now. Like, you know, like, all that DMCA shit, like, even yeah. on fucking, like, Wares websites, they'll find a way, you know, like, I, long gone is the time of being able to find anything. Like, but, I mean, you could find full films on YouTube back in the day, you know, like, now it's mm -hmm. fucking crazy how difficult it is, you know. Um, also, to answer what you had said, Hans, uh, one would be Louis C.K.'s movie, I Love You, Daddy, which has been hidden since 2017. It's never gotten a release. Somebody did leak it online uh, later that year right. because I think they were like they were going to give it, I, th I think anyway, Oscar treatment since it was coming out around the fall and there were screeners that had already been produced. And then that just never got released ever. That's been buried at some company, whatever. I mean, Why? or whatever. Because he loves jerking <laughs> off. Because he loves to mask. Oh yeah, I, I forgot about that. Yeah, <laughs> he just can't stop wanking. Man. Yeah, I all about that fucking hell. You you watched it, right? I did. Or... I thought it was actually pretty good. It was. It's. I mean, it's like a Woody Allen knockoff. So if you don't like if you don't like that, then it's not going to be that good. It's a little. It's it's fine. You know, it's not it's not anything special. Um, it's yeah. like what would be another the, the interview. Oh, the, oh the yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean that one. I mean, no one talks about that, that one. So that one got let down. that. I'll tell you what, though. That was the first instance of like a big movie with 
like actual stars at the time going to streaming. That was the first instance of that because they had no other, no other way to get that out. So they, they plopped that on streaming, I think on Christmas Eve and everybody was like, yeah, it's my American duty to see this, this movie because fuck North <laughs> Korea. So oh that became God. a tremendous yeah. hit. And since then, no, no one thinks about it. No one no, talks about it. Because it wasn't that good. There's something, um, there's something interesting, though, that I was thinking about, that there are films now that are, they're not literally banned, but they're banned because of, you know, why, you know, something the director has done. Like, you know, for example, um, the, I, I probably spoke about this before, but a long time ago, I was talking to a friend about a Polanski film. Now, I don't particularly give a shit about his film, but there's two films I really liked of his. Um, and I was talking to a friend about it, and she was like, well, you can't fucking watch that, man. It's Polanski. And I was like, well, yeah, like he, he's a disgusting pedophile, but like, I can still watch his films. <laughs> like, yeah. yeah, but you can't. Like, what? Like, it's so weird to me. Like, what do you mean? Like, you know, well, because that person is is this, you know, and and then yeah, and then there's another thing I've noticed where people will have to say that something is bad because of what it represents, you know, like you can't say that like, oh, I don't know, this, I don't know, weird example, Death in June, like weird fascist band, right? You can't say like, oh, that song, I like that song, like of theirs. You have to say like, it's shit. It's shit because they're yeah. a fascist. Yeah. Like, well, no, I, I don't right. like the guy and I'm going to steal the music probably. I don't want to give him money, you know, and I'm probably going to bootleg Polanski. Like, I care yeah. a little bit, but like, you know, you can still watch it. Like, the art is the art, you know. I really believe that you don't have to like, I just don't understand that thing of like, don't watch that because the person that made it is bad. It's just so fucking weird to me. Like, is it yeah, also, if we're going to go yes. down the list okay. of like Hollywood people who have uh, fucked kids, like you're not going to watch any movies right. at all. You're going to watch. Yeah. yeah I mean, yeah. Mel Gibson. Yeah, if I want to probably, read, he seems like the purest wanna, man, right? Well, um, what were you if saying? I want to read Mein Kampf. If I want to read Mein Kampf in Starbucks. How dare you, Barista, give me side <laughs> I'm just <laughs> I actually I'll tell you what, I actually saw a man reading Mein Kampf in Starbucks one time and he was dressed like uh like the uh, do you remember the berries and cream commercials in the United States for uh some like product or whatever? Nah, I'm talking to two foreigners right now. You guys aren't gonna know what I'm yep. saying. Yeah. It's all right. <laughs> anyway, he was a freak. That's all you need to know. Um so a movie I also want to talk about. I don't know if you got around to watching this movie, but it's kind of relevant to today's ethos, I guess, is Cruising, the Al Pacino, William Friedkin film. Because this is, I think, the first instance of like any kind of progressive unit trying to get a film canceled and removed uh, before it even comes out because of the portrayal of gay lifestyles in this movie. Um, which I, I, I think is pretty interesting. Hans, have you, wa I, you watched cruising, didn't you? No, no, I'm on my own. I know, I know of it. I know, I know what happens in it. I know a lot about it, but I've never actually sat down and seen it. Something about gay Al Pacino. Al, kind Al Pacino of, well, is an way. undercover cop and he's looking for a killer and he has to go and, uh, cruise, you know, these, these gay clubs to try and find his BDSM. Yeah. yeah. They're all BDSM well, he clubs. Goes to he goes into the Scorpio Rising Club. Right, yeah. Uh, yeah it's trying the same to find a serial killer. Right. Right. Uh, right. Yeah, try, and, uh, trying to find a serial killer that's fuck, fucking and killing gay people. This is right? this was all Something based like on like real murders as well. So it's kind yeah. of got um you know that that aspect to it and it was a big uh big 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 uh hubbub back in the day to the point where they were filming in I think New York City at the time and this was very well known what the movie was about. Uh, and members of the gay community would go and like literally hold rallies around where they would be shooting and try and disrupt the noise so they couldn't get good audio during the film. So they would be filming at a restaurant or something. And you would have like a parade of, of gays outside screaming and yelling and having like kazoos and you know, dancing in thongs or whatever the hell they do. I don't know. I wasn't alive back then. I find that, I no. find that really weird though. Like, I mean, okay, the gays gay people protested it as well but like i think when progressives try and cancel stuff like that i think it actually shows something that they don't mean to show like it kind of shows 
that they don't really like, they don't actually want to see the real face of certain aspects of the gay community. You know, and I, I've got gay friends that go to some mad shit. Like they do some <laughs> mad, mad gay shit, like mad, <laughs> mad sex stuff. And they, you know, they told yeah. me about it. I don't mind. Like I'm, and I'm, you know me, I'm like, cool man, do what you want. Like that sounds fucking terrifying. I wouldn't do it, but you know, <laughs> cool man, whatever, do what you want. I don't give a fuck. Yeah. And it's like a lot of progressives though, when faced with the reality of some of that shit, they're like, oh my God, oh my God. Like they're, they're, it fucking freaks them out. So instead of being honest and going, I don't like this, it scares me. They go like, this is a bad portrayal of that community. And it's like, no, this community does stuff like that. Like, you know, and why, why do you have to make, you, you know, I don't necessarily think they should be ashamed of it. You know what I mean? Like who gives a fuck? As long as they're not hurting. Well, that's, that's what I was going to ask. Is the gay community portrayed in a bad way in the movie or are they just showing them as horny? You know? uh, well, <laughs> I did. I mean, it doesn't. I mean, it seems like a seedy environment in these films, but that's what they are. I mean, if you're going to find yeah. some ass, you know, it's going to be a seedy environment, especially in you know, the yeah, 70s. Any, anywhere, right? right yes. Gay, straight. Like, if you go to a swingers like a club nice thing. For, for married couples down in Florida, then that's going to be that's going to be a weird experience for you. So, <laughs> I'm sure, yeah. yeah. Uh, there were scenes in this movie that were cut out that had like a you know someone was getting fisted on the dance floor or something. I don't know. I don't know. That's some <laughs> very dirty stuff. Uh, and I'm sure, you know, that was probably happening in New York City in the late 70s. New York seven, uh, you know, yeah. New York City in the 70s. Very weird place. Very wild place. Uh, but Cruising is a great movie. And uh, no, I, don't, I wouldn't say that they depict gays as like inherently perverse or anything like that. Uh, as a matter of fact, you know, you don't really get a sense of like any gay people outside of that environment. Maybe aside from like a couple of like supporting characters who are like interrogated by the Al Pacino character, but they just seem normal. They're not even like flamboyant in the movie. So, uh, you know, it was a big fuss about nothing. And it actually kind of was later embraced by the gay community, maybe 20, 30 right. years down the line, which intersects a lot with like the horror community. It seems like gay people really love horror and wrestling and comic books, you know? Hans, was it when they watched it? They watched the movie and they were like, oh, it's not so bad. <laughs> no, it's, it's not that years bad. Later. It's, it's a good dark movie from 1980. It's a good film. Um, Straw Dogs is another example of so that. No. Uh, I, don't, I don't like the implication you were about to make, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> Stra have you guys yeah, watched Straw, Straw Dogs? Dogs? Yes. That one's good. What's uh, that one about? That one James is... Um, no, no, not that one, Hans. No. Uh, that's Dustin Hoffman and uh, his wife moving out to um, like the countryside of England, and uh, yeah. they're they're you know just setting up their house and everything. And then the wife's ex boyfriend and his couple of friends decide to uh, do yeah, some yeah, yeah. scaffolding work or whatever for for them. And then uh, you know things get out of she hand. She teases them, and yeah, yeah, yeah. It's her fault. It's it's all the woman's fault. <laughs> I don't see. It. I haven't seen it, man. But I think I read the synopsis. I feel like I've watched. All the wrong ones. <laughs> I don't know. I watched like five. I think you watch the cool ones, the ones that sound cool. Bad Lieutenant. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I'm um, just like a child. Like, oh, yeah, Bad Lieutenant. <laughs> no, but Straw Dogs is really yeah. cool, though. It's really, it's really graphic, and it's like these really meek and little. Oh, no, uh, so, yeah. Straw Dogs by... is is yeah. great. Straw Dogs. I think you'd actually yeah. like Straw Dogs, Jake. Um, check that out. it's, uh, yeah, there, there's a controversial rape scene because it implies that she kind of enjoys it because it's with her ex, right? Like she's got complicated feelings about that. And then, uh, you know, okay. he lets his, his homie, you know, hit it next and she's not even aware of it. She's got her back turned. That's not nice. That's not a good trick to pull on any lady Jesus. you care about yeah. or don't care That's about for not, that, <laughs> that reason. That's not a good one. <laughs> um, there's and, fucking, um, Sorry, go on. No, and, and it just culminates into this thing where, where Dustin Hoffman is like, you know, he's kind of like one of the Try Guys. I, I watched a Try Guys video today where we were talking to Dr. Fauci. He's a lot like that. And he just keeps like taking it on the chin. They kill his cat. They rape his wife. And he's just like, things, things are all right. I'm okay. I'm a, I'm a good guy. But then when they, try to, when they try to kill the town retarded pedophile guy who accidentally murders the, the little girl, like Frankenstein, when he throws her into the lake... Uh, then he's like, no, not anymore. I'm done taking this shit. And he grabs his wow. shotgun and he's going to defend his home against, you know, these people. So, and then it gets like really good. So, uh, yeah, it's a great film. 
I hope I didn't spoil it too much by, by going into detail on that. But I think it's also a very relevant film to today where people are like in denial of, um, you know, having to commit to this idea of self-defense that you might not be safe because you want to be safe yeah. and you, you, you trick yourself into believing you're in a safe environment when you're not. Yeah. And maybe it comes down to when it's too late that you have to act on that. We're having that right now in the UK. Like uh, the government is trying to bring in, you know, a staggeringly um, authoritarian protest bill. Um, I, I mean, I don't want to derail this too much, but it's, I know what you mean. Like it's, it's happening now. And, you know, like it, it basically will make free protest. You know, it means the police can stop it at any moment, you know. And like the other yesterday, there was like some police officers got beaten up when, you know, in a, in a clash and one of their, their vans got set on fire. And now the media is like, oh, my God, what has happened? And it's like, you didn't say anything for two weeks. The government is trying to bring in a bill that is literally the sort of thing you see in Turkey and Russia and no one gave a shit. You know, like it's it, it's you're right. Like right now, there's this thing of like, oh, it's OK. Everything's OK. And it's like, nah, man, everything's burning like fuck. You know what I mean? Yeah. The minute that you hear anything at all about anything, it seems like nowadays is when people who have power get affected by it, even the slightest bit so absolutely true man i think that as well i think a lot of people are starting to realize as well maybe not in america but i think here they're realizing that this whole like left right dichotomy is kind of bullshit it's kind of it, it is i mean honestly covid in england showed a lot of people that it's it's just us versus them you know what i mean whatever that means it's it's you know what i mean a lot of people luckily i think are going hang on those guys i don't like but fuck them <laughs> you know what i mean um, which anyway, <laughs> to get back to banned films, well, it no, is kind it, of, it, it is kind it of the them that do ban shit, right? Yeah, yes. exactly. Right. This, like, this is entirely it, it's always like them. Right. It's a component, especially today, since in the U S especially it is, you know, it's all hegemonic, like the white house and Silicon Valley and Hollywood. This is all one entity now. And you're either on that side or you're not on that side. Yep. That's how I look at it. Yep. So the whole left, right thing is irrelevant without, um, you know, any sort of diversity of power um, in in the picture, I guess. So, I mean, it's all one source making all the calls at this point. And, all, it, you know, as a matter of fact, it does go across party lines anyhow, because you have a lot of these Mitch McConnell types who are in lockstep with whatever, you know, the Democratic Party or, or this or that want to do. And that all ties back yeah. to, you know, the social media companies and, and the corporations. So, it's all terrible. It's all very miserable. Well, the the right the right wing, uh, some of the, the irony I always find of the right is that they're always saying, "Oh well, oh what snowflake," and it's like they're almost always the ones that are saying, "No, you can't do that. No, you can't do this. We can't have that. We can't have." It's like they're literally arguing the exact same thing just from a different point. Right. You know what I mean? Like fucking Ben Shapiro being like, uh, wet ass pee. <laughs> like, you fucking loser. Like, you know what I mean? It's so embarrassing. Like, I mean, I thought the video was a bit over the top. I was like, man, that's pretty fucking graphic. But like, you're, you're a grown man. <laughs> just fucking move on. You don't have you know to, I mean? you don't have to comment on everything. That right. Like, There's some yeah, things that, no one's no one's really asking for your opinion <laughs> earnestly like everyone that asks for your opinion on things like that is so that they can laugh at you and yeah the fact yeah. that he can't see that it's just yeah no it's one brilliant. actually wants, yeah. no one wants to see you read the fucking lyrics to the song yeah. but if you do it it's going to become a meme so go ahead you know <clears throat> right right <laughs> we're asked p word <laughs> <laughs> what kind of grown adult can't say pussy like fucking hell man that really cracked me up. i thought that was so funny man but again like you know he was effectively arguing to like ban that song and ban you know what i mean it's like i, I don't know there's something about banning any kind of media there's shit that i hate and it's like i don't want to fucking see it i wish it wasn't constantly there but i never want to ban it you know what i mean if, yeah. you know if someone was like you know like snl it's it's absolute dross. But like, if someone's like, we need to ban SNL, I'd be like, whoa! What I don't know. The I would fuck? ban. It. I would like, put them all whoa. in prison. Personally, I think they. Want to throw away. <laughs> Maybe that was a bad example. Like, you know what I mean? But but you know what I mean. That went. I think the banning thing is just so stepping over such a line. You know what I mean? Yeah. And it is a thin line, but it, once you go over it, it's it's a big fucking deal. They're coming to get you. That's the thing. Like, no one ever thinks that. They'll ever right. be on that seat. 
And right. when and once it happens, it's like, no, wait, but I'm 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 one of you. What are you doing? <laughs> I'm supposed to. Hey, be how one, how much that. longer till you you get banned? Because now you're you're like a big guy now. Because you got over a million views on on your documentary, so you probably have some enemies right now watching this. Yeah. Maybe. Well, I mean, uh, <laughs> so our latest documentary, um, Ghosts of Karabakh, the one I was where I was reporting in Armenia. So like a massive like Azerbaijani and Turkish kind of like bot army mass reported the doc um, and YouTube couldn't take it offline because, it, you know, there's no reason to. But they have put it behind two. So now it's age restricted. And now a, a fucking window comes up saying this might be offensive or inappropriate. Like we're reporting on fucking war crimes, you know, like, and torture. Like, what is offensive or inappropriate? Like, it's it's very appropriate to do this, you know? So that's happened. Um, I'm surprised. I did think we might get banned for plastic defense, but I think there was so many views on it that maybe, like, YouTube, something dings, like, okay, this is good for us. Like, it means that it's bringing in viewers, you know? Because, yeah, you know, YouTube doesn't actually care about anything. They just care about, like, you know, what they can make money from, which, fine, it's whatever. It's a, it's a private company. I, I despise them, but I get it. Um, but yeah, man, I don't know, man. Like, I, I, I don't really think I've done anything particularly crazy. Like, I don't have any strong, like, right wing views or anything. You know, I mean, I'm, I'm ultimately what, what you would call an old school kind of leftist, really. You know, I just, I, I mean, I wouldn't class myself as that. I don't give a fuck. Like, I don't believe. I love how you say right it with whatever. Osama bin Laden right over your shoulder. <laughs> right yeah like, yeah exactly like, you know like i love like childish edginess as well but like, i mean I, i've tried to be kind of you know the soft like radical liberals you call them like they've tried to counsel me on social media and it's just like i don't care like you people are irrelevant to me go and write a 50 tweet thread about being offended you know i go to fucking war zones and talk about the plight of people in real problems like you know if some like or a kid who thinks he's a cab on the weekend wants to cancel me for some word i used it's, it's not going to affect me you know what i mean mm -hmm. so i i think it's i'm in a different place i report on war and conflict and a lot of people will go all right yeah he's a bit of a dickhead but you know that work is important to me so they you know they they stay involved but you know that being said who fucking knows man i mean it's you never know these days it's like what han said they can be coming for you at any minute and i know that sounds conspiratorial but it it the writing's on the wall man you you know you can just be taken down for fucking anything like it's it's all up to the the like the um the behest of whoever's controlling the social media or the platform, right? We don't own any of this shit ourselves anymore. So, you know, you have to kind of you know ride their bull, as my mom says. Right, it's and worrying. I mean, it's conspiratorial, but I don't think that it being conspiratorial negates like the reality of that whatsoever. Yes. Because these oh, people, no, a true. lot of these people who do the mass flagging have like their little private groups, their private chats where they organize these Absolutely. things and, you know, decide yeah. who the target of the week is. So no, I think it's entirely um, logical to prepare for that or to, to have that in mind. And again, it's all arbitrary. It's all about who you piss off. Like the actual, the, I mean, we, we were talking about this right at the beginning. It's not about the content of what you said. You can say the most heinous shit imaginable, but if you piss off the wrong person, that's when it, that's when the trigger is. Uh, the tastemakers, the tastemakers, like you can't piss them off. But like, I tell you one thing it has taught me on Twitter, at least maybe like I use that so much less now, much less and less. And I feel much better for it. But it has taught me that like some of the like weird arguments I got into looking back, it's like, what was the fucking point? Like, firstly, I should be allowed to say it. it's my right. I shouldn't be canceled. I shouldn't be banned because I, I don't say anything. I'm a fucking anti-racist. I'm an anti-fascist. Like, you know, I'm not breaking any of the big golden rules. And I really, you know, I really am not because I fucking hate those people. However, I should be allowed to say, you know, slightly offensive or even massively offensive shit. I don't care. No one has a right to not be offended. But looking back. It's like, did I need to? Like, I could have been creating something while I was doing that. Whilst I was in that argument, I could have been typing something up that I should have been doing. So now I'm like, I kind of just post on there like, this is cool, or here's some new work I've got. So what you're, what you're that, saying right now I don't bother. is I think one of the central problems of why we're caught in this loop, where we can go back to like our, tw our 2019, 2018 episode of, of movies, where we're talking for the first time, we're talking about the same thing. Like, damn, everybody's, you know, getting canceled. Everything everything sucks as far as this goes. People who would rebel against that are not funneling that into 
art that is, um, you know, uh, going against that, that sort of ethos, yes. they're getting caught up in arguments. And arguments aren't persuasive on a general level at changing the, the cultural climate of things. It's, you know, you're, yep. you're, you're one-on-one with, an, uh, with another person <clears throat> and you're essentially wasting your energy and your, your passion for whatever that is on that particular debate instead of using it in a more useful fashion. And I think that's, that's a lot of why there's a stagnancy as far as not getting to the next step of pushing back on this. I, I think that's a really interesting theory that needs to be explored more, you know. I read a book recently called The Circle of the Snake, which is uh, by Grafton Tanner, great writer. Anyway, it's basically about how, like, nostalgia has, like, ruined media and how the safe feeling of being in something nostalgic is actually, like, completely fake and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. But there was a part in it that made me think that, like, um, that, and I've seen this argument elsewhere, you know, it's good for the human mind to be bored. It's very good to be bored, right? When you have your phone all the time, you don't really get bored. And especially if you're the sort of person that ends up arguing, you're angry. And you never are fucking bored when you're angry. You're, you're consumed by anger. And I was thinking, how many amazing films just never came to fruition? Or the how many cool ideas never, you know, it's kind of like the sperm getting in the egg, you know. They never permeated because that person was too busy. You know, I go for a walk with my dog now in the forest all the time. I leave my phone at home. And I come back, like, fuck, I swear to God, like, nine times out of ten, I come back with an idea of something I want to do, something I want to write, or, you know, or like, oh, I'm going to read that tonight, I forgot about that book, or, you know, and it's like, yeah, man, how many ideas just didn't get through because people were obsessed with argument online or whatever they're doing online? It's, um, and that accumulates, you know, I think you're really right, man. Like, I think that's probably why things are going fucking stagnant, because people are not, you know, instead of having that 50 fucking tweet argument, got to make a transgressive script. You know, like what you guys are doing, like, that's cool. It's like, go and do something. Yeah. I mean, it, it, it's just, uh, it, it's weird to me that, you know, with everything going on today, it does seem like it's not just censorship that is hiding any sort of like intellectually stimulating art. It seems like people have just bottomed out, like it, it, as far as any sort of um, creative energy goes in, um, you know, offering authentic rebellion, which is unfortunate. I mean, may, I mean, we might, we might round the corner on that soon. Cause I feel like we're in, I mean, we're not in a different terrain necessarily than, than 2016 or 2020, but it feels like we're in some kind of new environment as far as things go culturally, just because of uh, a lot of the political and social shifts um, that have occurred over the past couple of years and last year, especially. <laughs> well, I well, agree. I, and I, sorry, Hans, sorry, go on. I'm sorry. Oh, what I think about this rebellion thing that you're talking about and that how no one's really creating anything that goes against the grain or that tries to piss off whatever the grain is, is that <clears throat> it seems that whoever tries to do that doesn't really have that much of conviction or value right. because as so, soon as the as soon as the machine comes calling, that's it. So everything yeah. they stood up for, everything that was fighting against that machine, money talks and it's like, all right, well now I'm part of that machine. So whatever I brought with me, it's gone. Right. So uh, I, I was up. talking about this on yeah. the, the low society podcast, which, um, you know, they were talking about, you know, how do you actually, how can you penetrate whatever it is that's like knocking people down for, for making things and, and having offensive aspects and it just comes down to, I think you just have to get punished. Like you have to take yeah. your punishment. You have to be willing to make that sacrifice in order to, for anything at all to change. Because if you're afraid of that, if you go half measure on that, then, you know, there's not going to be any ripples that, that, that are caused from whatever it is you're going to release. Um, so, yeah, I mean. But you need money for that, though. This is the unfortunate thing. You need money. And the only people that are trying to make anything transgressive are normally posing as making something transgressive. It's normally yeah. some alt-right fucking dickhead who's like, I'm going to make something and I'm going to make it really offensive and I'll call it funny. And it's like, you know, and I'm not against offensive comedy, but it's like you can't just be like, yeah, this is anti-Jewish. Ha ha, it's funny now. It's like, no. Like, look at that Nick Fuentes. Like, he's an absolute objectively one of the dumbest stupidest boring most fucking idiotic people and it's like what he you think that's transgressive 
And he's getting all of this. He's just like, he's like a head louse of a man. And like, you know, he, he's getting all this money from these right wing fucking donors. He can't suddenly change tact and start making actually good shit. I mean, he doesn't have the brain cells for it. But you know what I'm saying? It's like where the money is coming from now, it's either coming from a big right winger who wants you to make right wing shit or a big left winger who wants you to make left wing shit or like some liberal bullshit or some conservative bullshit. It's like, it's weird, but you, you kind of need a rich kid almost to not care. And the rich yeah. kids are too busy being influencers and shit now, you know, like I got some respect for a rich kid that goes like, all right, fuck it. I'm going to use all this money daddy gave me to not give a fuck, but make something good. But I think now, like, you know, I agree with what you're saying. You have to go, you know, what I'd say full pelt go full pelt at it and if you get cancelled fuck it but you know if you get cancelled and your money runs out <laughs> you're fucked you know I, if my patreon got cancelled i am fucked you know what i'm saying yeah. like i'm finished bro like you know and it, it's just that unfortunately we're at a place now where a gang of people on the social media app can get you fired from your job quicker than a fucking tribunal at, at, where you actually work can that is mental, you know? <clears throat> yeah. Well, it's, let, let's say, what, what was the most recent example of, let's say, a, a film movement that maybe didn't exist before or that was a little bit unconventional, not what regular movies were, that something like Mumblecore, let's say, right? That Mumblecore was like an, an underground movement or an independent uh, movie movement that was very successful in its own way, as small scale as it was. Because it was creating something new, it was it was presenting movies in a different light and showing actors doing different things that regular actors were doing. So it became something, and the people that were big in that uh, scene uh, were names, sort of, for people that knew about that. But then, as soon as they got one bigish property, then they all became that. Mumblecore now is dead. Not saying that it shouldn't be, because honestly, like I never thought it was that interesting. I thought it was obviously more real, quote unquote, but a lot of the stories were just kind of mundane and who gives a yeah. shit. So a lot of it is just boring, but it was a new thing. But now you look at the directors that were involved in that movement and a lot of them are doing huge things now, like Adam Wingard, who's doing the, what the Godzilla <laughs> yeah, thing or Corey, what is it? Godzilla vs. Kong. Yes. Crazy, yeah. And, and uh, what's, what's the other guy? Him, so like, but, but but that's the thing. Like they were creating a new thing that fine. It, it didn't give them the success that something like Kong vs. Godzilla will give them or the money that will. But now that uh, movement is dead and they are just a director that is part of that factory that is just going to create things that are nothing really special or don't really have a vision or anything difficult different to say. But you're just, you know, you're a name that's kind of known. So let's see what this guy's doing, even though, you know, nothing new but is shown. That's, in the that's movie. kind of the like, nature of things, though. You have you have these yeah, factions that come like together. That. They create a trend. And then, you know, most of them sell out. Some of them don't make it. And then the next thing comes along. But what we've seen is that there's not really a next thing. I think that that might be because there's not like a shared pop culture anymore. So in a shared pop culture, we can look at Mumblecore as like this weird little niche thing where people with like camcorders are making small, intimate projects about how, you know, your girlfriend wants to cheat on them and they're trying to cope with that. And they're <laughs> actually the bad. I actually I'm a bad guy because my girlfriend wants to sleep with three guys and it's my fault. So please love me. Yeah. So, I mean, um, you know, movies like that. That can be that can be the weird niche, cool little indie thing at the time if there's a greater apparatus of movies that are more typical, right? But um, I mean, every everybody everybody's in their own niche factions now as far as culture goes. You go online and there's an infinite number of these things. Like we have our own little Facebook group with four hundred guys who all think and act the exact same and wear cute little mm -hmm. outfits and fedoras and talk about Godzilla movies or whatever they do, you know? So it's like, it's that thing. I mean, it, it, it's difficult I think to... Though, yep. No, I think though, like, I do have some hope. I think something will come and we'll just be completely blindsided and it will be the new generation. Like, it will, and I don't mean like, you know, I... <sighs> There's one part of me that's like the kids are absolutely fucked because of social media. But then there's also like elements to that crowd that are coming up with some already like really original cool shit. Like I, I don't have TikTok or anything, but I have like younger family members that do. And now and then they'll show me some shit. And I'm like, that's fucking cool. That's really inventive. They've used a very basic like in-app 
tool to make something very funny or very like catchy or whatever. And I do have some faith that like the fucking 12 and 13 year olds of now will that will that will do something to them. And when they get to the age of having these like ideas to really make proper shit, I do think I just think one there's going to be some kind of movement that comes through and goes, fuck all that. We're going to do X, Y, Z, because this cannot be sustained. You know, like everything is cyclical and it's so fucking boring now. And people say, oh, well, each generation thought that. Not really. They didn't actually, because, you know, there was a like, I mean, if you look at fucking TV in the 90s, even in Britain, it was popping off. There was great shit being made, yeah. you know, and it's just now it's so dead. So it's not true that oh each generation thinks that it's not. We're just at the end, I think, of a cycle, and maybe naively, but I do have some faith that all these weird little niches will spring about a movement that just goes boom, we've got it, and something fucking new as fuck comes out, and us three are like, oh man, God, we're the old men now, we've, we're quitting, like you know, and they'll <laughs> they'll do some mad cool shit. I hope, <laughs> but you never know. But I I can see it. I do. I don't think all hope is lost, you know. I think movies are gonna just become 15 minute things that people watch on their phones and that's it there's not going to be any any no long, because everything no, that that's, comes, such, a, everything that's such an that old out. man from 2004 hold opinions hold like you're going to watch hold a movie on, on the on. sony psp on. What? please come on because <laughs> everything that's that's coming out or or things that have become successful in changing format let's say or something that's traditional uh, has been how to make this shorter so we get to the meat of it without having to sit there for three hours. What about so Justice something... League? Justice League's the Hold biggest on. movie right Hold now. It's four hours. Hold on. No, you're wrong. Huh? So, so, go ahead. so in the states, so in the states, in the states, you have a thing called Red Zone, right? Which is for football, for American football, where you only show whenever the team is close to the end zone, which is close to scoring, and it goes from game to game to game, so you don't watch the whole game. Now I saw that the, the president of the Juventus, which is one of the biggest soccer teams in the world, is proposing that w they create something like that for soccer where you only watch the last 15 minutes of the game so that you're not watching 90 minutes of boring soccer, right? So I, I had that in and, the and UK then for years, though. It's called highlights. Oh, yeah. Every Sunday, it's just highlights. <laughs> oh. It's just it's just guys that like... But, but everybody that watches highlights generally watches the game as well. You know, like it's just... I get what you're saying, but yeah, we've had that for a long time it's and it's more, never stopped I, people watching the full game. But I guess it, it just create, it makes it more accessible to people that are not willing to sit for 90 minutes to watch something well, don't that have maybe time to be fair. enough, I guess, or, or that, yeah. Because now, I, I don't know, it seems like everything is just fast now. Like everything has to be, uh, but, you know, besides Justice League, fine. But everything is, is you know, uh, immediate gratification. So... I, I I don't know with with that is true and the attention spans down. are boring. I don't I don't agree so with this. This feels I, very 1998 to me. Like the the World Wide Web is coming up. We got to make it really quick and step MTV the editing. Bugs. These kids, <laughs> please no. The, the reason why people watch movies is not. Demo. The, the reason why people watch movies is not the same reason why people watch YouTube videos. Now, you might get bait like that to try and lure people in. But if someone's watching a movie, they want to at least watch it for 90 minutes. They're going to feel gypped if they don't get something that is within a reasonable span of time. It's the same reason with books. You want a quick book? No, I want a nice long book. What's going to happen, I think, is, and you guys might not have any like um, background on this, but fun fact about my past life. I used to work in independent publishing book publishing if you will and yeah, uh, I, I uh i'm very uh I I remember. so yeah you remember that hans but uh yeah. what happened around like 2010 was you saw an emphasis on traditional big publishing companies the big five start to dwindle and people were more interested in authors like tao lin who were kind of experimental very online i think something similar to that is going to happen with the film industry especially since theaters are going to die so you're going to have more of a neutralized platform with the streaming, right? And around, again, 2011, 2012, you had these small, cool, hip indie publishing houses come up that were producing interesting works from authors who are like totally irrelevant now. And uh, some of them made it. Some of them got outed as pedophiles and using their fame to seduce 15-year-old teens or whatever they were doing. Um, I think you're going to have the same thing with film where you have... Um, a medium that makes essentially everything accessible so long as it meets whatever guidelines or, or um, you know, it's got to be in pro res 444, whatever it might be. Um, you're you're going to have that opportunity to showcase your work through 
these different venues, especially since it's not going to be financially feasible to do these giant blockbusters if the theater chains are, are closing up shop for good. You're not going to have too, too many uh, Justice League sized films. And, and as far as like properties like that go, Disney's already been like, we're going to commit to doing a series instead because that's more feasible. People have a greater appetite for that and it's going to be cheaper. Well, one thing that, like, I, I kind of get what you're saying. One thing that I think has been a good thing, um, not to be all woke about it, it's just gen genuinely good. Like, I know, like, a lot of the younger generation are a lot more exposed to foreign films now. Like, back in the day, like, foreign media, I remember one of my aunts bought me La Haine when I was, like, 12. And I was like, what the fuck is this? It's in French. And she was like, well, it's got subtitles. I mean, I didn't say it like that, but I was just like, it's French. And I was like, I don't speak French. She's like, well, yeah, it's got subtitles. <laughs> and like the idea of watching a film with subtitles, I was like, what the fuck? And then I put it on. Just a little, like, you know, a little angry 11-year-old chick. What the fuck? <laughs> I literally was like, what the fuck? And I looked at the back and there's a guy holding a gun. So I was like, all right, let's put it on. And I was like blown away. Like fucking like this is incredible. Like I didn't even know films could be like this. You know what I mean? Like absolutely blown away. That was just one chance that my, my, one of my arty kind of aunts bought me it. But now kids are exposed to all of this shit all the time, like, you know, like constantly. And I do think that there'll be like a space as they get older where, you know, the fucking, the, the, all these, these black kids, these Chinese kids, all these kids from these diaspora backgrounds and different places or wherever, they're going to start making some really cool shit because all this cultural amalgamation that they've seen from young will we'll make something new instead of it being like, you know, here's the rich white guys that control this. And I mean, honestly, like, again, I do sound like some fucking wokey who I hate those people, but that bit is kind of true. Like the same kind of people have been controlling the mass like movie market for years. Right. Yeah, Mel Gibson like, was talking about this. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. Yeah, yeah. I didn't mean them guys, well, I, but yeah. <laughs> but you I know what I mean? That... Eventually it's going to die out. Right. And then the, I mean, maybe not Hollywood, but there is going to be a I space for like, all dead. these new fucking kids to like just make cool shit, I think. you know. Yeah, I agree. I think the problem, the problem with what you're saying is that the voices that get elevated in the States, even if you're a person of color, you're still not a person of color. You know what I mean? So you get, you get people like Jordan Peele, who's whiter than I am, but he's a person of color. So everything he produces has like a very this side of politics tone to it. Yes. So it's yeah, not really yeah. it's not really saying anything brave. It's not groundbreaking. It's not doing anything other than let's push this same narrative that someone that doesn't have the same color of skin as me can't do because you know I'm pushing it from this side. But it's not saying anything new as you know compared to uh, a, a foreign film where they don't have the same mentality. And yeah. they would see things from a different point of view. So the problem with the States is that that the people that get elevated, fine, they're people of color, but they still have to fit into a box that is not really Absolutely. that person, you know? And yeah, so, I 100% agree. And a great example of this that I, was when Black Panther came out, right? Um, that's the, the superhero film, right? Yeah. yeah, Black Panther. And like that came out and everyone's saying, it's so amazing, this black film. And I was looking at it and I was seeing a film like basically the the same white racist people in hollywood that perpetrated like racism within media for like decades have now realized that the tide has changed now yeah. have made loads of money off of this film and then meanwhile you have films like beasts of no nation which was a fucking masterpiece made by like you know black filmmakers black produce whatever made about a black culture in africa and blah blah didn't even get a looking. They didn't even get a mention at Oscars or any of that shit. And it's like, what is that? Like, you know, the, the, it, it's it's just so fucking fake. It's for progressives to feel good about themselves and pretend well, that's, that racism that's is gone yeah. now. You know, yeah. they don't they don't want the real version of it because that's scary. So right, you, that's if, scary if for you, them. Yeah, I think if you're you right. show me if you show me real if you show me what the third world country actually looks like, like real poverty. I don't want to look at well, that. that. I'd rather racist, go to Africa. Honest. We can't show exactly. that. Exactly. That so, that. Well, no, I mean, to what you're saying, everything is marketed to the biggest consumer base in America, which is white women. So it's got to fit yeah. your palate. Um, if, yeah. and, and I think Jordan Peele, who you were just talking about, is a, a great example of what you were talking about before with like the Mumblecore directors, where uh, I think he had promise in the beginning and then he sold out. And 
that's a I mean, we're just seeing the woke version of that. If you want to see somebody who's doing like a good big budget um, Hollywood film, check out, uh, I think his name is Shaka King. And he, he's the director of Judas and the Black Messiah. That movie I had. Oh, I that, had, that man. I had preconceived uh, notions about that movie, but I was actually very impressed with that. that I film. really want to see it, man. It's uh, Fred it's, Hampton is a fucking hero, man. I love that guy. Like he did one of the most incredible fucking things. He did that Rainbow Coalition, right? Yeah. Where it's like, I don't care if you're black, white, his, or if you're poor, you fucking come here and you can get food. Like I thought that was beautiful, man. And the way they the fucking CIA killed him. Um, but sorry, so you said it's good, right? It's yes, it's actually a very good movie. I thought it was going to be yeah, a total piece of it. shit, but we had a guest on here who was like, "No, it's actually it's it's a good movie." So I decided to check it out because it was on uh -huh. uh, HBO Max, and I was thoroughly impressed with it. And I also checked out some of that director's short films, and he's actually like a very funny director, which is which does not right. fit the movie at all. But uh, yeah, very good, very good film. I check it out. Man. Yeah, but that that that's the thing. Uh, as much as you want to cover yourself with the flag of diversity and you have the Oscars now selecting two women for the first time ever as best directors and all it took was a pandemic that made it illegal to go watch movies at the theater. <laughs> They're so woke, you know? Uh, but that's the thing. Like now it's more about how many boxes do you tick than are you actually showing me a different side of that story? because everything is going to be sanitized to the point where is the equivalent of these white women going to Africa to take pictures as, at like a resort or whatever, pretending that they're, you know, helping or holding a, a fucking uh, broom or, or a shovel, pretending that they're doing something and then going back right. home. I built a church. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And, 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 and it's not actually showing hands you. with the locals, right? Yeah, exactly. Yeah. 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 Not afraid of AIDS. Yeah. Uh, because it, at the end of the day, that, real story that you're getting you're getting it from someone that is coming from a privileged background they just a different color they're just not white but uh, it's still someone that private school suburban house rich parents so that uh whatever picture of of that that you're trying to get is never going to be that but unfortunately that's how things run in the united states so that thing of the foreign films like that's still going to be there it's just we, we just have to get to a point where those voices are the ones that get elevated for what they are and not pretending that Jordan Peele has something interesting to say, you know? Yeah, I think I think you're right, man, 100 percent And I think like when I when I listen to you there, it's like the issue is not really cinema or films. It's like the industry and all of that around it. There's actually so many great films out there. And I think hopefully eventually with the kind of I saw it this year. Like I know it's the pandemic, but like Twitter was spamming so fucking hard in trends like the Oscars or the, whatever it was, the Emmys. And like, really, I don't think many people gave a shit. You know what I mean? And hopefully their power wanes and people can just go, yeah, I like this film. I like that film. Like, and realize that winning an award, like who gives a fuck? Like really, I do hope that the next generation, I think they will. I think things have just been atomized so much that they'll be like, what like oscars my favorite anime doesn't know about oscars like you know what i mean like i do hope that that you know i think they do need to lose their power let's shake it all up why well, don't if if the grammys are anything to go by that that was 18 million viewers last year and now it's nine million or eight seven million viewers this year so wow. people are people are really dumping out of these things the investment in any sort of film winning an award like the you know the artifice of it has been i think made mostly aware to the general population at this point and also like um things like rotten tomatoes critical critical reception of movies is not really worth what it was uh before mm -hmm. well yeah, that's people of the just that listen I... to their friends more now oh yeah. sorry yeah I, what? people just listen to their pals if i want to know what film i text you all the time right hey what film shall i fucking watch i'm not gonna look at like fucking oh what's the leaderboard i'm just gonna be like who do I know that likes cool shit? They kind of know I like this and that. Okay, you know, and I think kids really vibe off of that a lot, you know. But that's one of the things that I never understood about award shows, that you're basing your opinion or you're going to check something out based on the opinion of someone that has nothing to do in common with you. Or yeah. has nothing in common with you, you know? So it's just a group of 67 year olds are deciding whichever movie is the best movie of the year. And it's like, do you have any anything that you like in common with them? How them decided that something is good means that you're going to like it or going to enjoy it when you have nothing in common with them. 
Like that never. So whenever, whenever you know, a movie is selected as best best picture or whatever, it's like, well, fine. That doesn't mean that I'm going to enjoy it just because of that. But that giving them an award on on the opinion of a specific group of people that I, I is it's never meant anything to me, I guess. Right, and and the people that you're talking about, it's all just a big club, you know, like it's just yeah. a a circle jerk. It's a big club, like it's all what you said as well about like privileged people is so true. It's like you know, I, I see it a lot in journalism and, you know, and I'll see, you know, I've got a lot of friends of, the, you know, different races that grew up pretty poor, like the same same area as me, whatever. And then, you know, and I'll get on with them, no problem. And then I'll get into journal, go into journal world, as I call it. And you'll meet someone at some kind of event and they're like, oh, this person is like, oh, we've got this amazing black filmmaker. And I'm like, oh, cool. Like, you know, why not? And then you meet them and you're like, hang on, you're just as fucking rich and as posh yeah. as this person. Like my pals yeah. back home are way more interesting than you, like yeah, yeah, yeah. because of the background they're from. You're from like you were saying, you're from a fucking posh school. You're from the like okay, you have a slightly you have a different ethnical ethnic background, so your family life's different. But like that shit is still ingrained. All that elitism is still ingrained, and it's like it's just boring. I'm like, yeah, you're yeah. boring as shit, man. Like you know, like my friends back home, like I go around there and see his mum's cooking up some mad meal I've never fucking heard of and you know and it's great like I love all that shit it's like why be around the exact same people just different shades it's not just about that man it's it there's so much more to diversity than than race and you know it's almost racist in itself for like the liberal filmmaker to be like well we've hired you know 15 people of yeah. color we're good now it's like, no, yeah. man, what the fuck is that? What, you think they're all the same? Like, is this is this just yeah. a, are they a tick for you on a fucking form? Like, no, they're people with great ideas and different ideas and bad ideas. You know, no, same as any other one else. Like, right. it's very well, fucking weird, man. It's very that's what weird. it's become. It's never about what they're bringing to the table. It's never, well, you know what? We hired fat, uh, fat. Five yeah. fat directors, five, more five fat directors. Women. I would love to see more fat directors. <laughs> <laughs> we need we some hired, more fat guys. <laughs> we hired yeah. fat women of color to write this series of whatever, but they never said, okay, well, this person is bringing this experience from this and this and this. No, it's just, well, they're women Water. of color. What else? Right. And it's you like, know? I will, it's not to say that women of color haven't got good shit. It's like, okay, I'll bring you five women of color that will write the best fucking shit. But it's not just because they're women of color. Like, right. you know, it's crazy. It's like so well, they, worth they went to the person of color store and bought the first thing they saw. <laughs> yeah. like, it's, it's honestly like almost fucking racist in the way that they think that's enough to be, you know, equal. It's fucking crazy, man. Yeah, we need more directors like Abel Ferrer, director of Bad Lieutenant who loves smoking crack during all of his films and almost <laughs> ruining the production. He loves crack. <laughs> um really yes this is this is this that is so verified. much more interesting though he if you take a look at him too he's yeah he looks about the type he looks uh he looks like danny devito's penguin <laughs> from batman returns with his long hair and everything he's such <laughs> yeah, an interesting yeah. character he's like if martin scorsese was a fuck up like uh if scorsese just didn't make it um uh, you i know you watch bad well, lieutenant let's, let's we gotta talk about bad lieutenant a little bit i think just to bring it back around. Yeah, I, I got to go in about 10 minutes. Is that okay. all right? Yes, absolutely. Sorry. But yeah, no, no, happy to talk about it. Yeah, man, 100%. Um, yeah, no, sorry. Yeah, I watched it. Yeah. But going back to Abel Ferrara, like how much more would you prefer to sit down and have a talk with him than with like the Russell brothers or the fucking Taika Waititi or whatever the fuck, you know, all these sure, yeah, directors yeah. now that just, what do you do? Nothing. Oh, everything you say and do is sanitized and safe. And like, why would I ever want to sit down? Well, I, I mean, I think that's what we're talking about, though, is I think life experience at least helps yeah. creators create more interesting pieces of art because they have more Absolutely. perspective. So, yes, um, it, it, obviously, I'm joking about Abel Ferrer, but actually, I'm not joking about Abel Ferrer. We should have more people <laughs> like that uh, who have yeah, the initiative yeah, yeah. to create things. I think we'll be much better. Imperfect off. people, right? Like, imperfect people make... Imperfect people are just more interesting to speak to, let alone what they make. You know what I mean? You ever have a fucking conversation with a homeless guy? It's like, they have so... It's like, wow, what the fuck? You did what? Wow. Like, even if, it, even if it's rough... You like, talk you know, to homeless it's, it's people? Boys. You should never come to New York. I'll tell you that right now. You'll, you'll, you'll uh, be a bad I, experience I, I for fucking, you. I volunteered at a soup kitchen and shit, man. Like, it's not just a random thing. But, but like, you know, they've always got, like, some fucking interesting shit to, to hear about. Yeah. You don't forget them. You know what I mean? You at yeah. least don't forget. Like, And it's not just from pity. It's from, like, wow, 
you're interesting, you know? Yeah, absolutely. All right. All right. We'll just, we'll, we'll wrap up here. I feel like this is a good spot to wrap up since you got to go anyway. So, um, uh, where can people find you online, Jig? Yeah, man. Thanks for having me on again, man. I always enjoy it. Um, I've been watching a lot of films recently, actually. Like, I'm fucking on a roll. I'm going to watch uh, Gyllenhaal's Enemy tonight. So I'm going to watch that nice. Um, nice. after I have this That's call. Good. Yeah, I watched uh, I watched Prisoners, and then I watched some of the shit he did the other day. Um, but yeah, find me online. Um, so uh, just like my website, jakehanrahan.com, everything is there. Um, I got a book coming out soon. It's just like a compilation of my written work. Um, nice. or yeah, listen to our podcast, go to uh, popularfront.co. It's all about war conflict, uh, all of that shit. Terrific. And, uh, Hans, everybody knows where to find you. It's just Hans Memorial. Yeah. And, uh, if you want to get the video <coughs> of this episode, go to patreon.com slash low res five bucks. And, uh, yeah, you can see Osama bin Laden. You can see, uh, me <laughs> and, uh, it'll be a good time. All right. All right. That's been movies for this week. Jake, thank you so much for coming back on. Cheers, man. Thank you.